I'm blessed to have one of the most wonderful nieces in the world named Joyce, who's currently nine years old, and she's in grade four back in Canada. Now, when I first met her, she was just beginning to walk. She had very little hair on her head, and it was the first time that I was ever going to get to meet one of my nieces or nephews. At one point during our visit, when her mother had mysteriously entrusted Joyce in my care, I was in the kitchen. There came Joyce. She strolls in, and she rips off her diaper, which is the only thing she has on in the moment. And standing right in the middle of the hardwood floor, she just starts to relieve herself. <laughs> I remember both falling in love with Joyce in that moment and fearing for my future as a father. Humans are funny creatures. We live in a world that functions through extrinsic motivations and the need for immediate reciprocity. This mindset can lead to selfish behaviors where instead of investing in others and what is right and what truly matters, we simply, well, we simply don't. I strongly contend that making a difference is an abstract idea that many of us here struggle to pursue. You see, we're programmed from a very young age to know that to make a difference or to be the difference, these are terms that refer to positive alterations to a specific person or situation, yet I've observed that most of us battle with how to actually implement that idea. A common answer that you're going to hear from many people as to why they're in the profession that they are in is to make a difference. But what does that actually even mean? The biggest obstacle of the pursuit of the idea of making a difference is the reality that we often have no concrete proof as to whether or not we're actually doing so. You see, most of us struggle living in the unknown, and I can speak to my personal work as an educator when I say that in most cases, I have no idea whether or not that I've actually impacted anyone day to day, week to week, and sometimes even year to year. I mean, think about it. How often do you Show your own vulnerability by thanking someone who's made a difference in the small moments of your day, in the big moments of your day, in the biggest moments of your life. You see, we're not good at communicating these feelings of gratitude, and so the idea of making a difference, it remains abstract, dormant even. But the beauty of making a difference is that in the few moments where we do get recognition of our efforts, it usually makes that living in the unknown worth it. Because I'll tell you that some of the greatest feelings that I've ever had in my life include days where former students tell me that in some small way, years before, in a moment that maybe I don't even remember, I made a difference in their life. And I helped them to be the person that they are today. And on a smaller scale, none of us get upset when someone says, thank you in response to our kindness, our empathy, and our efforts. I would like for all of us here to start looking at making a difference a little differently moving forward. And I'm going to challenge all of you here to put this simple concept into practice. I strongly contend that making a difference is not an abstract idea, and instead, we need to start realizing that in every moment of every day, during every task, during every conversation, even when we are alone, that each and every moment, it makes a difference. In your life, in someone else's life, in the environment around you. The only thing you need to worry about is whether or not you're doing enough to make a positive difference. Now, if we all strive for this goal together, then reciprocity, it's a given. We all benefit. We no longer have to doubt whether or not our efforts are being appreciated. And by presuming positive intentions, by presuming positive intentions of those around us, I feel like we're going to be empowered to return the favor. Now, I think we should implement this idea in the most mundane ways. Start brushing your teeth the way that dentists recommend. Start responding to emails and text messages immediately, if even just to say, I need more time to respond to your email or text. Start walking like you have a purpose of where you're going. Start asking people, hey, how are you doing? And actually take a minute 
to find out their response. Put your friends, your family, your colleagues, even your strangers' well-being in front of your own. But don't forget about your own well-being. Start believing that you're going to be making a difference in every moment of every day, during every task, during every conversation, even when you are alone. It's going to feel amazing in 20 years. When your phone rings and someone you knew from a different time lets you know how much you impacted their life. It's going to feel amazing in 20 years from now when you pick up the phone and you call someone from a different time to let them know how much they impacted your life. In May of 2013, my niece Joyce was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome, which is a developmental disorder which is basically characterized by difficulties with social interaction. Life, it's just not always easy for Joyce, as the way that she sees the world is different than the way that most of you and I see the world. She doesn't always understand the use of sarcasm. She has difficulty dealing with conflict. And she holds on to literally everything you say or do, literally. She's smarter than the average bear. She's unable to share the spotlight. And oftentimes, she's quite misunderstood. But I'm guilty too. I've been personally frustrated in many occasions when dealing, or not dealing, with Joyce throughout the years. Frustrated in the moments when she's decided to be the only one that didn't want to be a part of the family photo. Frustrated in the moments when an accident has occurred that could have been prevented if only she'd listened to my repeated warnings. That being said, I think that Joyce has made the biggest difference in my life, maybe out of anybody. Because it's my journey. It's through my journey of learning how to love, accept, understand, support her that allows me to be reflective of my own actions and my own behaviors. You see, being a good Uncle Phil to her has made me an excellent father for my own daughters. See, being involved in conflict with her has taught me that I don't always have to be right and that there are many ways to interpret each and every situation. Observing and appreciating her uniqueness, her quirkiness, and her brutal honesty, it's really helped to make sure that I'm not afraid to stand up for what I believe in. But it saddens me. It saddens me that I don't know if it's possible that I could have made nearly as much of an impact on her life thus far as she has in mine. You see, Joyce doesn't always fit in. I suppose it's best to describe her as the square peg trying to fit into the, to the round hole that is normalcy. She's got the need to be loved and accepted just like the rest of us, and it's quite hard for me to hear that, despite her best efforts, she continues to have a hard time making friends. You see, Joyce has never even been invited to a birthday party. I hope that right now you're reflecting about how you know someone like Joyce, someone great, someone great like Joyce, who could really use your help. Because I think it would be amazing. I think it would be amazing if you'd leave today and you'd do even more to ensure that you understand that all of your actions, no matter how big, no matter how small, they have an effect that could possibly make a difference in that person's life. I hope one day you're able to meet my niece. And I know that if you get a chance to meet her, you're going to fall in love with her, just the way I have. Sure. <laughs> There's going to be some moments where you don't see eye to eye. But in the end, I hope you're both able to just laugh it off and agree to disagree. Well, I suppose I can't promise that she won't hold a grudge, but hopefully you'll find it somewhere in your heart to forgive her. And most importantly, I hope that you'd consider inviting her to your birthday party. Because I think that that would make all the difference in the world. At least to one little girl. Thank you.